Today on Go Angling, we're in central Minnesota and we're using one of our favorite midsummer walleye presentations, lead corn small cranks. If you uh, want to know how to add this to your arsenal, stick around, we'll show you how. In depth outdoors, Go Angling. Brought to you by Gander Outdoors. Crunch, crunch, crunch. Crunchy. Well, that one was out off the edge, but I am seeing most of the fish kind of on top of the flat, sure. and at least really close to the edge. That was number five shad wrap, wasn't it? Yeah, number five and just the yellow perch. I got the rod. That's about as big as you'd want to lift. <laughs> nice. Nice fish. We've been at it for about, what? No minutes. <laughs> pretty quick. <laughs> pretty quick and able to pop one right away. So we'll get them back and try and refine our program a Ooh. little bit more. I think and, that one was uh, in pretty good shape yet. Yeah. So Pat's fishing a number five shad wrap and then I've got a, uh, um, a shad dancer, a little bit more aggressive crankbait, trying to figure out what these fish are really looking for. So far it's uh, one to nothing. All right, before we get too deep into this, there's some basic information we're gonna share for anybody that's watching this video right now that's never used lead core. Uh, so what is it? Uh, basically think of lead core as one long continuous sinker. Uh, so what I've got here is, uh, this is 18 pound lead core, that's a suffix product, and uh, it's covered with the outer sheath is suffix 832 braid. And inside it is just the tiniest little hair of lead. And what that does is, it, uh, it sinks, obviously. Uh, if you maintain speed about two miles an hour, every color, uh, you've probably heard that term thrown around, will get you between five to seven feet. Now, what's a color? Every 10 yards of this line changes color. You can see here I've got a brown section, a yellow section, a blue section under that. And that's important because this is a product you can use without line counters if you choose. You literally count colors. Uh, now that you know that uh, lead core will get you between five and seven feet of dive or of depth for every color, if you need to put a crankbait, say, in uh, 20 feet of water, and you're using a lead core product that gets you five feet of depth per color, that's four colors. That's simple math. Uh, you let four colors of lead core out, put a crankbait uh, on the working end, and you start to troll. And it's a very effective way to get small crankbaits down deep. Hey, uh, something good just happened. Nice. All right. Well, you called it right up on top of the flat that time, huh? Yeah, right on the top edge. So kind of that 27. Mm-hmm. You know, one of the things that I think people need to keep in mind if they're considering fishing lead core is that the experience has improved a lot. Oh, double, Pat's got one. So lead core of old was a really bulky product. And by that, I mean it was, it was stiff, it was wiry, and uh, you needed a big reel to carry the lead core you need. And now, you know, like Suffix Advanced that we're using here, you get more depth per color than you used to in the past. In the past, mm -hmm. kind of five foot was the standard. I very often will get seven foot of color with the Suffix Advanced lead core. But more importantly, it's just a lot more fun to use because it's a thinner diameter, uh, it's a lot more user friendly, and you can get by with much smaller reels. You know, both Pat and I are using uh, Okuma low profile line counters. It's basically a bass reel with a line counter on it. It makes this whole experience just a heck of a lot more fun. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know in the past, you know, right now we're fishing kind of that 27 to 30. And in the past, for me, I was going 200 feet of line just At to least. get that. And yep. now we're running about 170. Mm -hmm. And this one hit that shad dancer and liked what he saw. He's got the whole crankbait in his mouth, which is nice. <laughs> you know, both sets of hooks there. And you get to the point in the summer when water temperatures really start to rise. Nice fish, gonna fire him back. And those water temperatures really start to rise where your live bait presentations will fall off. And what these fish are looking for, they're looking for a real active presentation to get them to trigger to, you know, to eat. And that's where this lead core presentation shines. Uh, to get crankbaits this deep, that, you know, we're fishing in that 25 to 30 foot range today. To get crankbaits this deep without the lead core, you'd be you know, forced to use just some huge deep diving crankbaits. 
and very often these fish would have nothing to do with those baits. So this is a solution. If you're looking to run a smaller crankbait, get it deep, lead core. And it's a lot more fun to use than it has been in the past. So you know, give it some thought. This might be a pattern or presentation that you're going to want to add to your arsenal. When we're running the boat pulling lead core like this, like we are today, a uh, really important thing is keeping your speed right so that you're getting the exact sink rate that this 832 suffix product is designed for. And you can adjust that, you know, if the oh. fish want. Sorry to interrupt you. <laughs> you can definitely adjust that if the fish are wanting it faster or slower. But the starting point is at two miles per hour, this lead core sinks at seven feet per color. So that's just your starting point, that's your gauge for if you go faster or slower, just gets you a, a really easy starting point. Right now we're trolling at about 2.2 yep. and the fish seem to like it. So we're so. probably getting six and a half foot, yeah. you know, at that point. If we were to go down to 1.7, 1.8, you'd get seven and a half. Right. Faster you go, the less it sinks, slower, the more it sinks. That fish crushed that bait. Yeah, it did. <laughs> it's one of those perfect presentations for learning water, covering water. And as your water temperatures start to get, you know, at the surface, you know, 70 degrees or higher, what you'll find is the fish will respond really uh, favorably to these more aggressive presentations like pulling lead corn cranks. And they're just not on that live bait bite anymore. So if you find that yourself in a situation where you're on a pot of fish, you've got that leech down there on a lindy rig and they just won't do it. This is something where go upwind, uh, get the line in the water, pull through them, and I'm pretty sure you'll be very pleasantly surprised that a fish that won't eat live bait, you know, come July, August, they'll just lunchbox one of these crankbaits. Yeah, nice just one. angry and aggressive. Yep. Yeah, when they're hooked like this, a guy doesn't necessarily need to use the net, that's for sure. So what that tells me, you know, spend a lot of time pulling cranks, when you see a crankbait like that sideways across the mouth of a walleye, that's telling me that I've got the size of the crankbait right, I've got the color of the crankbait right, that fish was totally committed. It wasn't doing that little tail nip thing. You start to see that quite a bit and you're gonna have to change profile, color, or speed. But I'm gonna say that's a 21, maybe 22 yeah. inch fish. Real typical fish will get bigger. And of course, some smaller fish that we could take home to eat if we wanted. See you, bye. So the crankbait I'm using, that's a number five shad dancer. It is a phenomenal lead core trolling crankbait. It's got a real aggressive digging action to it. And it's one of those crankbaits where, you know, early in the season in cold water, probably not your best choice. But as the water temperatures start to rise, you start to get over about 65 degrees, the fish really respond well to those real aggressive, searching, thumping crankbaits. So it's one, if you're gonna try this presentation, definitely wanna have a couple of those in your tackle box. They're just a really top producer uh, for my boat or when I fish in path boats. <laughs> Top producer anywhere. Right. Fish on. Pat, something's wrong with your rod. <laughs> I'm still sticking with that yellow perch shad wrap, but I think I'm actually gonna switch over to the shad dancer after this fish. Just... Yeah. All right, there we go. Pretty much everyone we've caught have kind of been in that same year class mm -hmm. so far. Yep. Unbutton them here. There we go. Yeah, I put on a number four shad dancer. Same aggressive, real erratic action to it. Just small, real cool looking pattern. It's purple chrome. All right, here we go. Shoop. Thank you, sir. Kind of right in that same range that we've been catching today. You know, low 20 inch fish. Real aggressive. Kind of, uh, lost our clouds and the fish seem to have gone towards a preference to smaller baits. So we've been doing a little switching up. But here's that tiny little shad dancer. Number four, so drop down a size. That lead coral put it anywhere in the water column you want it. I think we're probably about that 26, 27 foot range on that one. It was really baby in it because the hooks on that little bait are not very big. There we go. What you got there? Well, we made that switch over to that number four shad dancer and got another fish on. There we are. Well, there we go. Just another one of those average ones like we've been getting and staying pretty busy with those all day. 
That one's starting to fill out a little bit. Yeah. Hey, hey, hey. Might that be little, onto something with that, that little little... crankbait's working. Hold on, mamacita. There we go. Oh, just right under the jaw. Oh, she's off in the net. <laughs> Perfect. We'll take it. Not a bad fish at all, guy. Heck yeah, it's a nice one. See you later. Gone. Whammo. So one thing I want to point out for, for everybody that's been watching these Go Angling videos, I'm sure you've noticed that they're a lot more fast paced than like our TV show in the winter. Uh, what we're doing is we're taking a lot of the detail and we're creating short separate videos that we're linking to at the end of every Go Angling episode. So if you're looking for more information about rods and reels or baits or how to find fish using mapping, it's at the end of the video, man. Click on one of those little thumbnails on the title that uh, catches your eye and that's where we're parking all the good stuff, right Pat? Yep, all the fine details. All the fine details, that's right. That's a nice fish. Oh, look at that, <laughs> just barely hooked. That's, <laughs> that's a, a giant. That's a heavy one. All right, thank you Pat. Nice fish. Uh, wanna grab that? Yep. All right, that's what we come for. That's the result. Midsummer, lead core trolling small crankbaits, put these little tips that we shared here today to work. It's gonna put a ton of fish in the boat. So. From Pat and I, thanks for tuning in. This is Go Angling. We'll see you next time. For additional content related to this video, check out these videos. And don't forget to subscribe to In-Depth Outdoors and Gander Outdoors so you'll never miss a new video.